My name is Valentina Fenech and for my 125 presentation today I will be talking about transient global amnesia. If we go back to the beginning, the term transient global amnesia was first coined in 1964 by Fisher and Adams who described 17 cases of patients who had suffered from a syndrome which was characterized by the sudden loss of ability to encode new memories with complete recovery after a few hours. The annual incidence of transient global amnesia is about 5.2 to 10 per 100,000 to the general population, with the incidence increasing to 22.5 to 32 per 100,000 in patients aged 50 and older. In 1990, Hodges and Warlow developed these criteria, which you can see on the table on the right hand side in blue, and arguably the most prominent clinical feature out of that list is the presence of clear-cut and third-grade amnesia. With the ability to form new memories, they appear disoriented in time and have a tendency to repeat the same questions and statements over and over, something which has been referred to as the broken record phenomenon. Patients may also experience retrograde amnesia during the attack, which refers to loss of memories from events that occurred before the time of the attack, and this can go back days or in some cases even years. Other cognitive functions such as attention and language are generally spared and there is no loss of self-awareness and no clouding of consciousness. Patients may complain of non-focal symptoms such as headache, nausea and dizziness, but there should be no focal neurological deficit on examination. The duration of symptoms can vary, lasting between 1 and 8 hours, but should resolve within 24 hours. After the episode, patients are left with an amnesic gap for the duration of the episode. In some cases, episodes of TGA may have an identifiable trigger or e event that precedes it. Physical exertion is the most common, followed by emotional stress and sudden changes of body temperature. The exact mechanism underlying transient global amnesia is poorly understood, but various factors have been discussed as a potential cause, and these include spreading depression, epilepsy, cerebral ischemia, and abnormalities of venous flow. The diagnosis of transient global amnesia is usually a clinical one, and therefore a lot of effort should be put into getting a reliable witness account of the event. If this is not possible, it may be difficult to make a diagnosis. There are a number of other conditions that can present with acute memory impairment, and the main differential diagnosis, which are considered in this table here, are transient epileptic amnesia, transient ischemic attack, and psychogenic amnesia. Psychogenic amnesia is similar to transient global amnesia, in that it may also be preceded by a stressful or significant life event. But unlike TGA, psychogenic amnesia causes loss of autobiographical memory and personal identity. Patients with psychogenic amnesia are also usually indifferent to their memory loss and they don't tend to ask repetitive questions. Transient epileptic amnesia is caused by epileptiform activity arising in the medial temporal lobes, and it can be difficult to distinguish from TGA because they both tend to affect similar age groups and present with prominent anterograde amnesia. But transient epileptic amnesia is more likely to present following multiple events. The episodes tend to be briefer. Patients may exhibit the clinical features of epilepsy, have an abnormal EEG, or have a clear-cut response to anti-epileptic drugs. Transient ischemic attacks are unlikely to present with isolated amnesia without other neurological deficits. Having said that, the diagnosis of TIA may need to be considered in patients with risk factors for vascular disease because of concerns regarding future stroke risk. We now know from prospective and retrospective studies that if MRI is correctly timed, it can detect small lesions of diffusion restriction in the hippocampus of patients with TGA. For example, this image on the right shows a small focus of signal hyperintensity within the right hippocampus, which you can more clearly see with this blue arrow pointing at it in a patient with transient global amnesia. Therefore, neuroimaging with MRI may be useful to support the diagnosis, particularly in situations where it may be uncertain. So why is it important to recognize transient global amnesia? Firstly, as already discussed, having an awareness of atypical features is important because it can point us in the direction of an alternative diagnosis. It can avoid patients being referred for inappropriate investigations, which can lead to incidental findings. And finally, it also avoids patients getting inappropriate management and lifestyle advice. There is no specific treatment for TGA other than reassurance, as it's considered to be a benign condition that does not cause any lasting harm. There is also no need to inform the DVLA following a single episode for patients holding a Group 1 license. And that's me. Thank you for your attention.